Unfurl your light sails for this week's Initial Counts. Part one, Initial Counts. Part one, Initial Counts. Hello again, best of trackers. Today, we're talking about the second episode of Lower Deck's final season, Shades of Green. The episode title is clearly a play on probably the franchise's worst episode of all time, Shades of Grey. Thankfully, this isn't a clip show, though it does feature some recycled themes, particularly in Mariner and Boimler's plot, which harkens back to the second episode of season one, Envoys. We get a nice contrast where in the episode, the pair purposely do not report the fact their mission is in danger when they lose the Klingon dignitary they were escorting. Here, they don't report it first, but once they fully realize the ensigns assigned to them have been kidnapped, Mariner is the one to step up and report what happened, where, in Envoys, Boimler wanted to report it, but she stopped him. We get our first like here for Mariner suggesting that the Ensigns are doing some buffer time. I usually do this at the end of the video, but if you're not aware, we do a live stream on this channel every Monday at 8pm Eastern about different Trek topics, and the show is called Buffer Time which is itself a reference to Lower Decks episode, Temporal Edict. Come chat with me and a bunch of other Trek YouTubers this coming Monday about these first two episodes of Lower Decks. Other than showing us four seasons of growth for our main characters, it also seems like they've changed some just for meeting their alternate counterparts from the previous episode. Particularly Bradward, who now has these numbered rules to live by called Boimler's Bointers which sounds like a callback to Leffler's Laws from TNG's The Game. They find their lost crew playing dead in an alien holding cell and convince both captors it's best to just let them go. The second plot going on in the episode continues the Orion War against the Orions. We do get more context about the Blues, as their arrival Orion House that pronounced the name of the race differently for some reason. The Pirate Queen orders them to settle their dispute with a solar sail race. Devana finds out her sister is pregnant, though, and spends the rest of the runtime trying to keep her from exerting herself, even though we discover that it's routine for Orion women to give birth during battles. And this overarching theme that Tendi's Starfleet training is antithetical to Orion pirate life, which culminates in her trying to end this race in a tie, only to anger the Queen and have her and the Orion's wealth appropriated by the Syndicate. Despite this, their parents are actually happy not to be the fifth most powerful house anymore and deal with assassination attempts. There's a small C-plot chucked in here to touch on Rutherford's sadness about Tendi, and the shuttle Sequoia gets fixed by Talin to try and cheer him up, only to find that he was purposely waiting for Tendi to come back, and have this be their project together. My only other like for the episode comes for catching a glimpse of Guji. While he's helping Talin tear the Sequoia down to its deck plates, so Rutherford and Tendi can bond over it even more. This like is also for adding a stick figure of Talin to the gang on the hull. Not a lot going on in the numbers here this week. Hey guys, me from the editing room. I don't know how I forgot about Billup's dragon, but seriously, Let's get a like in there. I don't have any major complaints, but nor do I have any major loves. The episode gives us a bit of character development, some Orion lore, and gets Tendi back into a blue uniform. It's very serviceable, and I look forward to the season hopefully wowing me a bit more as it goes on. If you haven't seen them already, I have a new weekly series of YouTube shorts out called Federation News Minute where I do comedic news stories from within the Star Trek universe. Thanks so much for joining me, and until I see you again, I've been your host, Dustin Wing.